the Carrymore SF Sabre 45 is a rucksack that's held in high regard both in military circles and within the bushcraft community. But is it really any good? And more importantly, is it worth the money for your average weekend bushcrafter? The rucksack itself retails for about £150, although you can get it a little bit cheaper if you shop around. But if you want the side pockets or the rocket pouches as they're known from Carrymore SF in the same colour, then that's also going to set you back another £50. So we're talking about £200 give or take, and that isn't what I would call a cheap rucksack. In fact, I'd argue it's pretty expensive. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's not good value. But before we get into that, let's look at the bag in more detail. The capacity of the main rucksack, which is just this central part here, without these two side pouches, is 45 litres, and that on its own will weigh 1.85 kilos. And that may sound heavy, but it's actually pretty comparable with a lot of hiking rucksacks. So if you look at something like the Osprey Atmos 50, then that comes in at two kilos. So it's pretty similar. The material on this bag is a thousand denier nylon, and that is really tough. That is military specification, and it's what they use on webbing and things like that. So I've got no qualms about pushing through undergrowth. You're getting into thorny bushes and things like that with this, because this will hold up. Now with some rucksacks I've had, I feel like I've got to baby them. Uh, I've got to look after them. But with this one, I just don't. I will use this one. I'll put it on the ground. I'm not worried about it getting scuffed up because this is pretty tough material. Now, in addition to being a thousand D, uh, it also has a water repellent finish on the outside. And then on the inside lid, we've got this uh, waterproof PU lining on the inside as well. And although it's not seam sealed, it does offer a high degree of water resistance. Okay, so starting from the top, we have a really generous lid pocket. And that is good because there's no uh, separation inside the bag. So this is where all your small items go, unless you've got your rocket pouches attached. Now you access the pocket via a YKK zip, which tends not to snag, so it's a really good zip to have. And it also has these really good zip pulls as well. And these make it handy to operate when you're wearing gloves. You can just pull that across. And as you can see, it's quite a generous pocket. So you can fit things like your first aid kit, your hat, your gloves, uh, you know, snacks, torch, things you might need in an emergency, plenty of room in there. So that, that lid pocket is really generous and I use that a lot. Now you flip it on the side, you have another mesh pocket here. Uh, and what I would say about this mesh pocket is, while it's a useful pocket to have, the mesh that they've used is not the same mesh that's on the back of the bag. And this mesh does feel several levels of quality lower down. So it feels like a cost cutting measure. And that's a shame at the price of this bag. I wouldn't expect that. Um, we just turn this around. What you do have on this bag, which I really like, is you've also got, you've got the sh shock cord system on the lid. Uh, and this is really useful, for example, if you've got a rain jacket, because you can stow that when it's wet on top of your bag rather than put it inside and get everything wet. So very, very useful. And on the outside of the bag, you've got the tape here. Now the tape on most uh, military rucksacks I've seen are a lot tougher than this. Uh, they're not elastic like this one is. So this one is very close fitting, but it feels like that might go before the rest of the bag does. So that's just something to be aware of. I've had other bags with this elastic feel to them before, and over time they kind of perish. So it's just something to be aware of. Now inside the bag, you've got a normal standard uh, draw, draw close. And again, the material here, it feels a little bit lower quality than you get in the standard infantry Bergen. It's definitely not as tough. And if you look at mine, there's already signs of wear on here. Uh, you can see where it's white here, where it's starting to sort of fray a little bit and the uh, and obviously the coatings come off. So it feels like this will go before the rest of the bag will. And again, it's a cost cut measure. And at this, at the price of the bag, I don't know why they've done that because it, um, it lessens longevity of the bag. So it's a real shame. Moving down the back, we have a standard grab handle at the top, and that's what you should use to move the bag if you need to. Uh, you've also got a really well padded back panel here, um, and it's got this cool mesh on the back, which is designed to help with ventilation. Now they have sewn ventilation channels into this as well, as you can see, these little contoured lines, uh, and that's designed to help with airflow. And I do find my back doesn't get too hot with this so far, even though we are in the summer now. Now, you've also got the nice straps, and the straps are articulated, so these are designed to conform to your body a little bit better than a straight strap would. And they're reasonably wide, they're quite stiff, so they don't kind of get all budged up like some straps do. Uh, and they're reasonably padded as well. So these, I think, are very comfortable straps to wear. I like them a lot. And they, they are pretty much similar to the Infantry Bergen uh, rucksack straps. So designed to take weight, 
but they're really good. Now, what Carry More SF have done, which I really like, is they've also included these uh, strap uh, management ties, I guess they're called. Uh, and what they're for is to manage any excess strappage that you have, so it's not kind of flapping about. Because if that gets caught in the wind, it could catch you in the eye, just get snagged on things. Now with me, old habits die hard, so I still take mine off with sniper tape. That's just what we did. And I prefer to have a big bunch of uh, straps to grab hold of when I'm adjusting, as opposed to a thin strap, and then have to kind of channel it through these but they are a really good idea particularly on the the sides here because when you've got the rocket pouches on and off you can't really take these straps up because you need longer lengths or shorter lengths depending on whether you've got the rocket straps tied on so really nice idea at carry more sf you've done a good job there that's very useful on the front of the bag we have two crampon holders and these do feel really really tough and durable i can't see me using these myself for crampons but you could definitely attach something there if you had to you've also got twin ice axe holders at the bottom there and again i'm more likely to use those for walking poles rather than for uh, ice axes uh, and i just tie a bit of shock cord around here to actually strap the pole up properly and when we look at the side of the bag, we can see we've got two big chunky zips here. And these are for attaching the rocket pouches. Uh, so you just literally zip them on, zip that up that way, and then you attach it with the attachment points. So you've got four clips. You've got uh, two at the top here, and you've got two at the bottom, uh, and they just clip on, and then there's no way that that's gonna fall off once it's on there. So it's really quite secure. You've also got these uh, compression straps at the side, and these go around the rocket pouches when they're on. And when they're not on, they just clip into there then you can bring it right down and they're really useful because when the bag isn't completely full and you're just using it as a day sack for example you can really cinch this bag down and then it stops everything moving around inside it and makes it nice and compact so really good to have uh, in terms of these pouches you know this is the rocket pouch you can get other types as well so you can get ones that are kind of like dual ammunition pouches or you can, can get a molly panel as well if you want to but the, the pouches are fantastic um these actually make the bag, if I'm absolutely honest. They're made of the same material. Uh, you've got, again, a nice big chunky Waikiki zip with a zip puller. Uh, really voluminous inside, that's 12 litres. That's, that's a big bag. Uh, so you can put all your stuff in here, your stove, your food, everything. Even your waterproof if you wanted to. Now, for me, I think that rocket pouch makes the bag because what happens is when your bag is laid out and you're using this in practice, it means all your stuff's really easy to get to. You've got your main things like your tent, your sleeping bag in the main compartment. Everything else you might need during the day, you can get to in a rocket pouch and you just open it up and they are the easiest things to get into. Open it up and it's just so convenient to pull things out. So in practice, the rocket pouches are fantastic and these absolutely do make the bag. One thing about the rucksack I don't like so much is the fact that the top opening at the back of the main compartment is actually quite narrow. That means getting big items in, things like your sleeping bag and your tent, are actually quite troublesome sometimes. But that is the price you pay for having a bag of this capacity with this length so that it works with a decent hip belt. Now if you were to make this bag wider so it was easier to get into, then you know to have the same capacity 45 liters it would have to become shorter that's just basic geometry so where uh, you know the hip belts would then be in the wrong place so although it's a bit of a pain it's the price you pay for having an effective hip belt and what i would say is you know you're taking stuff out of the main compartment maybe a couple of minutes every day while you could be potentially wearing the hip belt for hours at a time so for me i think it's actually a price worth paying so on the whole, I would say that this is an excellent bag. It's exactly what I was looking for. It's the right style. It's very robust. It's very comfortable. I even like the color of it. Um, but is it worth 200 pounds? Well, that's, that's kind of a personal question, I think. And you know, in terms of, I can answer the question, can you get a better bag for the money? I would say, you know, if you were to look at Army Surplus, you could get a bag that is very similar in design, arguably more robust and at a fraction of the cost. So that is something to think about. But if you wanted to pay the premium just to have a bag that is a solid color, then it's down to you know, whether it's worth it to you. Now, for me personally, I already had a 45 liter infantry Bergen from Pre, and I don't think there's enough difference between that bag and this one to justify spending 200 pounds. And I didn't. What I actually did was I managed to find this one on eBay and I got it for 70 pounds with the rocket pouches in really good condition. And at that price, it was too cheap to say no. So it is a good bag. I would definitely think about looking at it. Uh, but if you've got an existing your Bergen as well, 
it's not a lot of difference in it if I'm absolutely honest. You might be better off saving your money and spending it on an adventure instead.